Okay, we're going to begin with a couple of things here about Romans 16 to start us off here. Uh, close personal friends and co-workers that Paul had at Rome. Even though Paul's never been to Rome, there's a lot of people he knows at Rome, which means he can have a good situation of what's going on, which is a good reason for thinking when he spends so much time in 14.1 to 15.13 talking about tensions over matters of diet and calendar, that he knows something about what he's talking about. So Prisca and Aquila, obviously he notes. Prisca and Aquila were with him in Corinth. They were with him in Ephesus. Uh, and now they're an advanced team in Rome. Epinatos, uh, who is a first fruit of Asia for Christ, uh, is somebody that Paul would have converted over in the province of Asia Minor, Western Turkey. Andronicus and Eunia are described as his ethnic kin, his kin, understood his ethnic kin, that is fellow Jews, and my fellow prisoners. So they at some point have been with Paul in prison in the east. Greet uh, Ampliatus, my beloved in the Lord, apparently somebody Paul knows. Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and Stachus, my beloved, probably also known to Paul. Greet Rufus, the chosen one in the Lord, and greet the mother of him and me. Paul seems to have a connection with the family. Other possible close personal friends and co-workers at Rome, although we can't be absolutely certain, Maria or Miriam, who labored much for you, Apelles, the approved one in Christ, certainly the, the people that Paul knows in some way, True Fina and True Fosa, two women, the ones laboring in the Lord, Perseus, another woman, beloved woman who labored very much in the Lord. So lots of personal acquaintances at least Paul has at Rome. It's interesting that by far the longest set of greetings occurs in a letter to a community that Paul has not yet visited. Why would that be the case? To establish Paul's connections with the community. So he's going to make every last conceivable connection that can be possibly made. No need to do that with a community he spent years with. Another thing we learn from Romans 16 is the existence of house or tenement churches. Uh, either they're in standalone buildings, houses, uh, personally owned property, or apartment complexes. Prisca and Aquila uh, are greeted along with the section of the church that's distributed at their house. Asuncritos, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobas, Hermas greet all of them and the brothers and sisters with them with them understood generally this forms the nucleus of another house church. Philologos, Eulia, Nereus and his sister and Olympos and all the saints with them imply again a separate little network of believers probably organized as a house church. Two family groups that may have formed the nuclei of two or more house or tenement churches Greet those from the ones of Aristobulus and greet those from the ones of Narcissus who are in the Lord. So we, we have different house churches there. We also have evidence from chapter 16 of unity problems. Romans is the only Pauline letter where Paul doesn't use the word church singular to refer to all the Christians in a given city. There is a parallel that we have going on in Judaism at Rome. Jewish synagogues in Rome lacked a centralized organization, unlike Jewish synagogues in other major cities like Antioch and Alexandria. Paul, in Romans 16, doesn't merely send his own greetings. He asks the Roman Christians to greet other believers in Rome as a way of increasing the networking among them. And we can compare the command that we find mentioned I have twice, actually it's three times, in Romans 4, there's also in 14.3, uh, 
Three times in 14, 1 to 15, 13, Paul gives the command to welcome one another as if they don't know each other that well. You have relatively independent house churches that only occasionally may get together. And when they do, it seems to be for the purpose of disputing issues, as he says in 14.1. There are Jewish believers at Rome, certainly Aquila and Prisca. Uh, Aquila, anyway, there's no evidence regarding the ethnicity of Prisca. Of course, the diminutive form of the name is used in Acts, Priscilla, Priscilla. It's a hard C in, in the Greek, in other words, the kappa. Other Jewish believers at Rome, Andronicus and Eunia, who it's referred to, as we noted, as my kin, referring to ethnic kin, fellow Jews. And what's interesting here is he describes them as notable among the apostles. We'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, who, also before me, have come to be in Christ. They were Christians before Paul. And they're apparently described here as fellow apostles, and indeed notable among them, which would give Rome an apostolic foundation from Jewish apostles. Possibly they're among the 500 who saw the risen Christ, and perhaps they promoted the weak view of diet and calendar that Paul is concerned about in Rome, but not nearly as concerned about the reaction of the strong to this. And they may have provided the apostolic counterweight to Paul's views on this issue. Other Jewish believers, Herodian is called also my ethnic kin, a former slave, now a freedman to the Herodian family. That's why he has the name Herodian. This was the far and away most influential Jewish family in Rome. The name is what we would expect of a slave name, drawn from the family name. There is an immediately preceding greeting to those from the ones of Aristobulus. Now that itself is an interesting note because two grandsons of Herod the Great, Aristobulus and Herod Agrippa, they both came to Rome as hostages and were educated with the future emperor, Claudius. So they had some significant status. That would suggest that the Herodian is indeed attached to the Herodian family. And other possible Jewish believers mentioned in Romans 16, we can't be sure, however. Uh, there's this figure, Mary, uh, who's either known as Maria or uh, Miriam. Uh, the manuscript split on which name to be used. The Miriam, of course, is the Hebrew form of the name, and if the Hebrew form of the name is the more original reading, and indeed our earliest manuscript, along with the important Sinaiticus, read it, uh, then it's more likely that, that, that she may very well be uh, Hebrew, Jewish. Rufus, called the chosen one of the Lord, the mother of him and me, the question is whether this is to be identified with the Rufus, who is the son of Simon the Cyrene, who carried the cross of Jesus, uh, according to Mark 15, 21. We can't be certain. It's just speculation. It's a possibility. The problem with suggesting these two are Jewish, though, is why doesn't Paul identify them as ethnic kin explicitly, as he does with Andronicus, Eunia, and Herodian? So we have a question mark. We can't be certain whether in fact they are Jewish believers. You can only be certain about 10%, about one in 10 of the names mentioned in Romans 16 is Jewish. Now, another element to call from chapter 16 is the importance of women co-workers. Prisca, first person greeted, even before her husband, as also in Acts description, probably indicating a greater significance in spiritual matters. The husband provides the money, the wherewithal, he's the tent maker, but she's the one doing the most of the ministry. I know a couple like that, a school in Maine that I spoke at some years ago where the wife is the Maine InterVarsity leader. He's the lawyer, he brings in the income of the family, helps her out with the ministry. And she's the main person ministerially in the team. So it's enough authority that a, uh, Priscilla and Aquila could even take aside a figure like Apollos and explain to him more accurately the way of God. Eunia. Uh, she's listed along with Andronicus. The question is, what does it mean when Paul says, uses the word episemoi, 
and tois apostolois. We know what the tois apostolois is, that's the apostles. Does the end mean among or two? Which the two main options here are, does it mean that these two figures are notable among the apostles, remarkable, outstanding, prominent, or distinguished among them, meaning that they're part of the group of the apostles? Or does the text mean well known to the apostles, which does not designate Andronicus and Unia as apostles? Uh, it's a long debate about this. A whole book has been written about the subject. The weight of scholarly verdict on the subject now is that the former is the correct meaning, notable among the apostles. They are included among the apostles. That would make Unia one of the apostles. And we mean not in a little a sense, but a big a sense. Now, one could say, well, maybe that's because she's part of the husband-wife team and derives the authority from the husband, maybe. I mean, there are other texts in Paul which in indicate uh, status hierarchical differentiation uh, between a husband and wife. Uh, and there are issues about, as you know, in the 1 Corinthians 14 text about women speaking in the church, not eliminating prophesying, but distinguishing, um, evaluating prophetic utterances so how do we weigh that against this? I'm inclined to think that in part her authority is derived from the husband relationship, but she nonetheless still remains an apostle and would carry significant authority or weight in the Christian community. So sometimes Paul is used as a whipping boy by feminists who think Paul is so anti-feminist. But you look at a text like Romans 16 and you see, well, wait a minute now. He actually looks quite good about his view of the role of women. Other uh, women co-workers, as we noted, Maria or Miriam, who labored very much for you. Trufina, Trufosa, the ones laboring in the Lord. Persis, the beloved, who labored very much in the Lord. Uh, the reference to Rufus's mother, who's the mother not only of Rufus, but functions like a mother to Paul. Uh, Eulia, Nereus is a man, but also reference to Nereus' as sister. Important to note from this that nine out of the 26 individuals greeted in Romans 16 are women. Seven of them receive an added description of their significance, compared to only eight out of 17 for the men, seven out of nine for the women. Six of which of the women, six of the seven, for which you see an added description, are commended for their hard labors for the Lord, as compared to only four men. And among the first six individuals greeted by Paul, three are women, first, the fourth, and the sixth. That indicates the importance of women's ministry in Rome. We saw also in Philippians, two, Philippians 4 uh, the reference to Euodia and Suntuke as leaders of the church at Philippi, among others. Socioeconomic status of the recipients, Aquila, some degree of status, tent maker, mobility, has house churches, has been moving around, Corinth, Ephesus, Rome, employs Paul. Half of the names mentioned uh, in the list, however, are really found in Roman inscriptions, suggesting immigrants to Rome from the east. The people that Paul is commending have come from the east to Rome. As immigrants, they're not going to have the same status as native-born Romans. Two-thirds of the names that we find in the greetings list are common to slaves and freedmen, which is essentially the same percentage we find in Roman society generally, percentage of slaves and freedmen to free people. Freedmen means something different from saying free person. Freed person is a person that had been, an ex had been formerly a slave and still has some residual attachment to their former master. 